to lesson 10, projection. During this lesson, we're going to be revisiting some of the techniques we've covered so far, such as breath flow and control, clarity of tone and resonance. These are the most important elements that contribute to vocal power and projection. Without good breath control, there is no clarity of tone. And without clarity of tone, there's a lack of resonance. And without resonance, vocal projection, power or volume is greatly diminished. So we're going to take a deeper look into dynamics, louds and softs, and how we can better use our breath control or breath pressure to increase the amount of resonance we achieve when we're singing. However, projection doesn't just relate to the intensity or volume or resonance. Good projection is also measured by how clearly you can transmit your story into the ears of your audience through the power and clarity of your diction in particular through the way you articulate your consonants which adds energy and vitality to our words while we're singing. Have you ever listened to a singer and although the sound of their voice was audible found yourself straining to understand what it was they were singing about? Weak or muffled diction is also a form of weak projection. And so we're going to look at ways in which you can articulate your consonants clearly so that the story you're telling in whatever song you're singing is easily received and understood by your audience. So before we go into the first exercise for this lesson, it's important for me to emphasize that your vocal power and projection is not achieved through force. In fact, the more breath you force through the chords, the more tension you acquire in the muscles that surround your vocal apparatus, such as those found in the neck and throat. And tension will only contribute to your lack of projection. So when you strain, you take away the purity of resonance that occurs when the sound wave is allowed to travel into the various resonating cavities. When you strain or engage the neck muscles, the sound becomes trapped or stuck in the one area and therefore is unable to resonate inside the appropriate cavities. Purity of resonance occurs when the sound is allowed to resonate freely in appropriate cavities and is what creates volume and therefore aids projection. So now that you've gained some clarity on what projection truly is and how it's achieved, let's get into some practical exercises that will help to improve your overall vocal power and projection. In this first exercise for this lesson, we're going to revisit the technique we learned in lesson 2.13 in the abdominal control exercise. Remember how we use the S sound, S sound during that exercise and by engaging our abdominal muscles, we were able to increase and decrease the volume of the sound we're making. So what was actually happening during that exercise was that we were increasing and decreasing the amount of breath pressure that was being built up behind our vocal cords. In singing, the more breath pressure that builds up behind the vocal cords, the louder the sound will be. The lower the breath pressure, the quieter the sound will be. Now that you've worked through more of the program and have a better understanding on sound production, chord closure and resonance, we're going to do that exercise again. However, this time we're going to try something a little different. We're going to sing the notes in this exercise staccato or short and detached. Okay, this will help you with the beginning of your phrases by teaching you the specific level of abdominal engagement and breath pressure you need to use to achieve different volumes as you begin singing a phrase. However, before we go into uh, that exercise, I want to briefly teach you about onset. 
all right? The term onset basically refers to the commencement of sound or the point at which the breath meets the vocal cords and the sound begins to come out of your body. Often when we're singing staccato, it's much easier to use the throat muscles to make the, sh uh, the sound short and detached like this. Ah, 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 ah all coming from my throat, okay? Notice how there's a popping sound as the, as the sound begins, as the tone begins. I'll do it again, listen. Ah, 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 okay? This is what is known as glottal stopping. And glottal stopping is where the chords begin vibrating before the breath arrives, giving a hard vocal attack. And this is a natural technique that we all use in everyday speech. In fact, it's a wonderful technique that can also add color, character, vitality and style to the song you're singing. However, the problem with using a glottal stop when it comes to dynamics and breath control is that instead of gauging your abdominal muscles, you're using your throat muscles, which can lead to the sound getting stuck in your throat. And as we know, this not only reduces the amount of resonance you'll achieve, but it also leads to tension, strain, and a forcing of the sound. So instead of using a glottal stop or a glottal onset, make sure you keep your throat open and that the sound begins more gently like this. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 instead of ah, 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 okay? So this ah, 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 is what's called a simultaneous onset, where the breath and the vibration of the chords occur at the same time, giving a more balanced, resonant tone. And just for education purposes, there is another form of onset that can also be used to add color and interest to the beginning of a word or phrase, and that is the aspirate onset. This is where the breath passes through the vocal folds before they begin to vibrate, giving a breathy sound like this. Ha, 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 ha. Listen carefully. Ah, notice how that breath came first and then the sound? That's an aspirate onset. However, we'll work on that a little later in the performance lesson. For now, let's go into the first exercise for this lesson and practice our simultaneous onset. Projection is all about how much pressure, breath pressure, you need to build up behind the vocal cords in order to commence and sustain the phrase with an intensity or power that matches the content or story of the phrase you're singing. For example, it's common for beginner singers to be aware that they need a lot of pressure or intensity in the sound to begin the phrase and then to go ahead and overdo it okay, by overcompensating. For instance, let's take the opening phrase of Someone Like You from Jekyll and Hyde, which by the way is included in the application in song lesson. So that opening phrase goes like this. I peered through windows, watched life go by. Okay, so that's how the opening phrase should go. Notice how I still had lots of energy and projection, but I was also in alignment with the dynamics required to sing the phrase tenderly. Now listen as I demonstrate what it would sound like if I used too much energy, intensity, or pressure behind the sound. I peered through windows, watch life go by. Okay, did you notice how it was too forced? I built up too much pressure and therefore the dynamic level was out of proportion to the dynamic level that the lyrics were asking for. 
It lost authenticity and balance. And I also went beyond what my voice is capable of producing properly in terms of volume. And therefore, my chords blew apart and the tone became weak and breathy. So it's really important to sing within your means, meaning that you don't try to force the breath in order to get a louder sound. If your current vocal dynamic range is, you know, only so much, then sing well within those limits and be sure to keep working on your breath pressure to expand that dynamic range, you know, during your practice sessions. And you can tell if you're building up too much pressure or moving beyond your current vocal dynamic range when you lose power and clarity in your vocal tone. And you'll find that instead of creating resonance and achieving projection, you're blowing so much air through the chords that you're losing resonance and power and creating more of a breathy sound that simply won't carry to your audience. That's where this exercise is really going to help you. Through it, you'll build up a sensitivity to what is too much and what is just enough pressure to achieve good, clear projection, whether you're singing softly or whether you're singing a more dynamically powerful phrase. Like any other vocal technique, there is no quick fix for achieving vocal power. Vocal projection is a skill that's developed through practice trial and error and experience. And with that said, let's give exercise number one a go, shall we? Okay, during this exercise, we're gonna be implementing the two techniques we just learned, simultaneous onset and balanced breath pressure. As you begin each of the notes in this exercise, make sure that your throat is open so that you don't glottal stop as you commence the sound. And you can practice this with me now by making a sighing sound like this. Ah. Ah. Okay, make sure that you don't let a little puff of air out before you make a sound, but rather, once you've inhaled, keep your throat open and commence the sound as soon as you exhale. So instead of this, ha, ah, ha, ah, which has a little H at the beginning of the sound, make sure that your chords come together at the same time the breath begins to leave your body like this. Ah, oh. ah, oh. okay, try that with me again now. Ah, oh. ah, oh. right. So this exercise gradually crescendos, which means it starts quietly and gradually gets louder. So it crescendos from a quiet tone, a quiet note, and gradually gets louder with each consecutive note. As you get louder, increase the amount of pressure behind the vocal cords by engaging your abdominal muscles in a, a, you know, a little more on each note. Be sure to maintain good chord closure so that you achieve good resonance and only sing as loud as you are able to with clear tone. Okay, so if the tone begins to get breathy, the louder you go, you're forcing too much air past the chords. So try increasing your breath pressure less aggressively or more incrementally, you know, just little steps. We're also using the Italian vowel sounds in this exercise, so be sure to keep your jaw relaxed and dropped while attempting to make a more vertical sound, as in A, E, E, O, U. Okay, rather than a, e, e, o, u, which is a more horizontal or narrow placement. Okay, so let's get to it. This exercise is number one, staccato crescendo. E 
Right, exercise two for this lesson is very similar to the first exercise and reinforces the concept of incremental increase of breath pressure. However, this time, instead of focusing just on increased volume or pressure on separate individual notes, we're gonna gradually increase the amount of pressure we're applying over one continuous legato phrase. Okay, now even though we're going to join the notes together and sing them legato, we're still going to separate them with the NG sound. Mm. So your knowledge and consistence on consistency of tone is really important here. You don't want to break the phrase up by stopping the breath flow when you say the NG sound because this will affect your momentum and it's important to really focus on um, these ideas of momentum, um, balance of breath pressure and clarity of tone now because we're going to be working more extensively on that in exercise three. For now though, make sure that you continue to use a simultaneous onset even though you're singing an NG sound. So instead of doing this, mm, 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 okay, mm, ah. You know, make sure you, your onset is clean and clear and your throat is open like this. Okay. Also remember to maintain good chord closure and don't blow too much air through the chords because this will cause you to lose power and projection as you increase your volume or as you crescendo, get louder. Uh, this is where your control of your breath is really important. So only add enough pressure to increase the volume slightly 
on each note and only so much that you're still able to maintain good chord closure and resonance. So let's give this exercise a bell, shall we? covering in this exercise is one you'll be able to use when it comes to singing those soaring phrases that give you the goosebumps as they go from a lower volume to a higher volume. And you often hear these types of phrases in power ballads such as Adagio by Laura Fabian, just as an example. I'll demonstrate. <laughs> Forever you stay na, 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 na. Okay? In order to execute a phrase or increase your vocal power and dynamics like this, you're really going to have to implement many of the techniques you've learned, such as clarity of tone, breath pressure and control, resonance and consistency of tone. So not to mention keeping your jaw relaxed, modifying your vowels, keeping your ribs suspended, singing with forward focus, singing with energy and creating the space required for those high notes, i.e. raising your soft palate. Now, this might seem like a lot to remember, but don't get overwhelmed here, okay? 
once you become more familiar with each of these techniques and they become a habit, adding them all together won't seem so overwhelming. So just do your best because that's all you can do. Okay, and keep focused on the progressive nature and development of those techniques. In other words, just take one step at a time and eventually all of those steps will add up to the giant leap you're looking for. Okay, right. So let's get into exercise three, soaring crescendo. Okay, during this exercise, we're going to repeat the exercise we did in the previous session. We're going to take out the NG sound that separated each of the three notes. This time, we're going to sing on one continuous sound on O. Okay, make sure you begin with a simultaneous onset and gradually increase the pressure of your breath by gradually increasing the engagement of your abdominal muscles. So rather than increasing the contraction of your abs, abs in a, a stepping or incremental fashion, we're now gonna gradually and continuously engage them, much like we did in lesson 2.14 when we were first introduced to vocal dynamics. So rather than doing this, <coughs> Okay, we want to gradually and smoothly increase the engagement of your abs like this. Okay, let's do it.
Many singers believe that projection means high volume or loud singing. But projection actually means allowing the sound to reach your audience, whether it's loud or soft. Projection is clarity. It's achieved by creating enough resonance in the voice that it reaches the ears of your audience. And so in this exercise, we're going to learn how we can sing softly, but with enough projection that the sound you make can be heard clearly by your audience. This is where breath control, clarity of tone or chord closure and the proper use of your resonators is really, really important. Much like singing high notes, singing quietly but with projection and clarity requires less breath. Commonly, singers assume that to sing more quietly, they need to add more breathiness to the tone. However, if you do this, it will make your sound quieter, but it'll also greatly reduce the amount of resonance you're able to achieve and therefore diminish the amount of projection you achieve. So during this next exercise, make sure that you achieve good chord closure whilst only singing as quiet as you can sing clearly. In other words, if you find that singing very quietly but clearly is difficult for you, and it is quite a challenge by the way, just sing as quietly as you can before your chords are no longer closing properly. Singing quietly requires great control of the vocal muscles and just the right amount of air pressure. If it helps, try singing the following exercise on the NG sound rather than the words. This will help keep the chords closed and will also assist you with controlling your airflow. Remember to keep your ribs suspended and to maintain the consistency of your tone by focusing the sound out in front of you. Also, remember to keep your energy levels up. Singing softly doesn't mean relaxing and just letting everything take care of itself. Okay, it requires extra focus and attention on all the technical skills we've learned to make the quieter sounds travel. And lastly, switch those abs on, okay? You don't need to apply a lot of pressure, just enough to keep the diaphragm from recoiling too quickly. So here we go, let's try softly singing together. Softly singing Softly singing Nice and clear Softly singing Keep that vocal line going consonants in. Softly singing. Sing on those vowels. Softly singing. Sound goes out in front of you. Softly singing. Keep those ribs up. Softly Thank you. 
As I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, projection is not just about singing louder. It's about successfully delivering your story in a clear and concise manner to your audience. And so this next exercise is going to focus on consonants. We already know that the quality of the sound we produce is carried to our audience via our vowel sounds. However, without clean, crisp consonants, it's very difficult for your audience to understand what it is you're singing about. Consonants add spice and vitality to the sound that you make, and they also assist greatly with expression, expression, expressing the emotional content of the story you're telling. If your consonants are interrupting your vocal line because they're overemphasized, or if they're weak and muffled, all right, the projection of your story onto your audience is certainly going to be hindered. So we must strike a balance between maintaining your vocal line and also emphasizing your consonants clearly enough that your story is heard and felt and experienced by those listening to it. Now we're going to look more deeply into the expressive nature of consonants later in the program when we go through the lesson on style, licks and tricks. But for now, we're going to do a simple exercise that will give you some practice in singing your consonants clearly. That's all consonants, whilst maintaining your vocal line. And this exercise is called ABCs. Okay, you may know this song, especially if you live in a predominantly English speaking country. If you don't already know the song, that's completely fine because the sounds we're going to be singing will benefit you just as greatly no matter what your native language is. So as you sing through this exercise with me, make sure you record yourself with an audio device that will pick your sound up clearly so that you can then listen back to see if any of the consonants are possibly interrupting your vocal line or perhaps those consonants that need a little extra emphasis to bring them out more clearly. You can also record yourself doing this exercise while you stand back from the microphone, first on the other side of the room and then as far away as you can possibly place yourself from the microphone because this will give you a great indication as to whether your consonants are clear enough over longer distances. If you're singing to an audience that's 50 rows deep, would the person in the back row be able to hear your consonants clearly? Placing yourself various distances from the microphone on whatever recording device you're using will give you instant feedback about which consonants are more or less articulated or audible. So it's important during this exercise not to overemphasize the consonants we're about to sing. Remember, we don't want to interrupt our vocal line. So instead of something like this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay, where the, conf the, the consonants are overemphasized, or instead of something like this, a, B, C, D, e, F, G, where the consonants are not articulated clearly enough, we want to strike a balance where the consonants are clear, but at the same time, we're able to maintain our vocal line like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right? It's also important that you don't sing on the consonants, like when you say L or M or S, for example. Instead, carry the vowel sound that begins the consonants, like the E in S, for as long as possible, and just drop the consonant in right at the end of a note. All right? So rather than E, S, we would sing S, 
okay? This will help greatly with maintaining your vocal line and it'll also give the consonants the appearance of being crisp and clean. So let's sing our ABCs, kiddies. Congratulations on completing another comprehensive yet important lesson. Once again, we've covered a lot of ground during this lesson. We've learned that projection is not about pushing the voice or about singing loudly. It's about control and resonance. It's about delivering your story in a clear and easy to understand fashion by implementing techniques such as clarity of tone, breath control and breath pressure and articulating your consonants clearly so that your audience can understand what you're singing about. All of these elements require individual attention. So just take your time and work on one element at a time. Remember, one step at a time. Okay? Trying to do it all at once can be confusing and overwhelming and it's simply not necessary. Remember, learning to sing well is a progressive journey, much like the creativity and step-by-step -step nature of putting the pieces of a puzzle together, for instance. You'll probably have a very clear picture now on what it is you want to be able to do with your voice, but like the puzzle analogy, each piece must be strategically placed one at a time so that you end up with a complete picture. So as you work on putting the pieces of your vocal technique together, keep the bigger picture in mind and be certain that as you implement each technique, you are creating what will one day be a masterpiece. It's important that you remember this piece of advice that I've just given you so that you stay focused and passionate. So as per usual, revisit this lesson often and implement the techniques demonstrated here to assist you in achieving more clarity and control over your vocal power and projection. Remember to never force the tone and to resist any urge to sing louder than your voice is ready for.
okay you'll get far better results in a much shorter period of time if you do things properly and care for your voice so that's it for lesson 10 I'll see you next lesson for a fast and furious course in vocal agility. This is Ray Henry and happy singing.